Okay, social doc, interview 10, take one. The answer is boxers. <laughs> this is gonna get awkward. Uh, my name is Jeff Belanger. I grew up in an old New England town and we would have sleepovers and play with Ouija boards. And that's really what uh, probably got me hooked around age nine. We would have, uh, have these sleepovers in a friend's allegedly haunted house. What I thought was so cool was that it wasn't like a Hollywood story. It wasn't blood dripping out of the walls. It was just, yeah, someone else lives here with us. We see this old man in the hallway. And even his parents were like, yeah, we, we live with someone else in the house. And so, uh, so I got hooked. I grew up in the town next to Ed and Lorraine Warren, so certainly they had an influence. I'd see their lectures when I was you know, a teenager. And then I went to school to be a writer and uh, a journalist, and that's really where, uh, where I launched my paranormal career. Uh, around October, you go looking for ghost stories, and I just got hooked on researching the history, interviewing the witness, putting myself into these locations, and, uh, and that evolved into a website, into a book career, lectures. Um, you know, working in television shows related to this subject, and I just love it. I love everything about it. I love the people, I love the subject, I love the theories, because you're really asking the big questions. What happens after we die? Are we alone in the universe? Uh, do we know every animal, every creature that lives on this planet with us? And, and you get to ponder that, and that's the best part about the paranormal. The popularity of the subject on television with so many shows is a blessing and a curse. Uh, always will be. The blessing is that we are way out of the closet now. It's totally acceptable for you to stand around your office water cooler and say, hey, did you see that ghost show last night on that channel? You know, pretty weird, but guess what? Something like that happened to me too. So now we're allowed to talk about it, whereas 10 years ago uh, we weren't. So that's a good thing. The bad thing is it gets people thinking that ghosts appear on demand, that you know, uh, if you go ghost hunting in the span of 44 minutes, you're going to see two or three things and collect all kinds of evidence. So the curse is that people think this stuff is ready on demand in some of these famous locations, and, and that's not always the case. And the other, the other downside is that a television show exposes just one way of doing things, because it has to, and I understand that too. It's a television show. It has to look, look the same each week. You have to have characters. Uh, you have to have drama. You have to build tension. Otherwise, nobody would watch a television show. And I've talked to many ghost hunting groups who said, man, there should be a show about how it's really like, you know, what it's really like to be ghost hunting. And I said, that'd be the most boring show ever. No one would watch it. You'd never sell commercials. It would be off the air before the first commercial break because uh, it would just be boring. So, so I get it. I get all sides of that. So um, uh, we live in a society that, that, is, that puts a lot of, um, uh, a lot of the uh, stock in the personality of these people, um, and that's what these shows are selling. Personalities first, content second. And so, so you know, so that's, that's kind of the downside, is that we think there's only a couple of ways to do this because of the prominent uh, ghost hunting shows. But the reality is there's as many ways to do this as there are people doing paranormal investigation. The paranormal is a fad right now, but it's a fad that will never peter out entirely because it never has. And, um, and I refer to at least uh, two centuries of history uh, as an example. Um, in the 1980s, UFOs were all the rage. You know, ghosts were, were really not on the, uh, the paranormal radar. And then late 90s, early 2000s, ghosts became all the rage. And, and now what we're seeing recently is, is um, cryptozoology is getting a little more popular. UFOs are coming back again because people are having sightings. Uh, it's a really interesting time. So there will always be waxing and waning in, in the interest in various avenues of the paranormal. It will never ever go away because it never ever has. Yeah, there is a lot of drama in the paranormal, which is why I don't talk to a lot of people anymore. Uh, I really don't. I've, I've been doing this publicly for publication for 15 years now, long before you know any of the TV shows that are on today got started. And, uh, and I've, I communicate with a lot of groups, and I've just found over time there are people, individuals, and sometimes they happen to be entire groups, that I really enjoy corresponding with, that are excited about the subject. And I will always connect with people who are excited about the subject. When people who are excited about, well, I'm the senior vice president of my group, and that group over there, the West End ghost hunters, are at war with the East End ghost hunters, I don't want to hear about it. I don't, it doesn't interest me, it bores me, um, and I'll just walk away mid-sentence. So, um, and, and if it's going to be on an online venue where people want to argue about that stuff, I don't read it, I don't care. 
Um, I, I don't let it affect me in any way, shape, or form anymore. Um, and it, and I, luckily I don't have to because I work on enough projects that I can include people or not include people uh, as needed. And I'm always happy to talk about this subject. You should care because the paranormal went mainstream. Uh, we became cool somewhere along the way and we're affecting pop culture. And real life and pop culture affects art, it affects music, it affects the movies you watch, the television shows the networks and what they put on and then that feeds the culture, the culture feeds the, the you know, the, the memes, the, the cultural memes and it all rolls on itself again and again. That's, that's the world we live in. Um, the fashion, every piece of it uh, gets affected by, by culture. So you should care because a lot of interesting things are happening right now. Large religious institutions just don't have the memberships they had even 40, 50 years ago. So, but people still need spirituality. I believe it's a basic human need. So if you're not getting it in church or synagogue or mosque each week, you're getting it somewhere. And some people are getting it out in cemeteries in the middle of the night, talking to audio recorders, hoping to get voices of dead people on there. Uh, even if they don't realize what they're doing is, is a spiritual endeavor, even if they say I'm being a scientist or just a legend tripper and having fun, they're still reaching for something that, uh, that, that, that's primal, something that's primal in all of us. And you can ignore it, you can be an atheist, you can be a religious person and view this as an affront to your religious beliefs. Um, that's okay, um, but it's still out there. Just, just as people are going to practice uh, belief systems that are different than yours, they always have, they always will, but this stuff is out there and, and it's affecting pop culture.